In this demo, we are going to look at importing records into your Zotero library. We're going to look at things like importing um, journal articles first off from uh, the online databases that are available through Moodle. Also, Google Scholar can plug in very nicely into it as well, so that can be useful. We're going to look at how you can get the records for a book in. And there'll often be instances where you want to look at um, online resources. Maybe it might be an online report um, or a website that you want to reference. So we'll have a look at that also. And often you'll find that you will want to have blank records. So if you have an image that you want to reference, for example, or a blog uh, that might not click in and come in automatically so well, you might want to create um, a blank record for that and fill it in manually. The other really handy thing is that we'll talk about as we go along is, is that taking notes as you go along is really useful. So we'll look at that um, as, as we go, but I'm going to start off and I'm going to look at importing journal articles first off. So the first example I'm going to do is uh, use is I'm going to use EBSCO search, which is available through the library pages here on Moodle. So let's say I want to have a look at this particular article here. Okay, if I want to see the full text of it, I can have a look here. Okay, so have a look and see is this something you want to keep for later. Let's say this is. If I go over here, because I have my Zotero plugin, this is now turned into a little journal page icon. So if I click on that, that is going to save it down here in my Zotero library and I can look at that later and I can come back to that page again. Um, I'm going to put a note here so lest you say I want to remember this later I can put a little note in here and I'll be able to retrieve that later on. You can also um, find information uh, from different sources as well if you don't have the full text. If I just click on this here for example, this brings me to a page. Now I can't get the full text here, but look, that can be handy for later. I can click it down here and you can still have that to view at a later stage. And it may not bring you to the full text like these other ones do if you go through our databases, but at least it's some sort of a record you can follow. You can always check with the library if you want to get, see if we can get full text for you on that. The next thing I'd like to have a quick look at here is getting a book record into your library. Now this is a worldcat.org. It's essentially just a, a, an online catalogue. It doesn't have the full text of the book, but the, that's not what we're after. We just want to have a little record of the metadata of this article, which is essentially um, just the, uh, the digital information, who wrote it, when it was published, and so on and so forth. So, I'm just going to have a look here. I'm going to just type in this book, okay? Contact Law in Ireland. Find the one that I am looking for. Okay, you see here a few all editions. Make sure you click on that because, of course, it's going to be really important that you are not citing something that you haven't read, okay? Make sure you use the edition. If you notice a much later edition uh, version of a book that you're thinking of using, you might consider getting the newer edition. Again, you can chat to us in the library about that. Um, and we'll see if we can get that in for you. So I'm going to click on that there. Okay. Now if you see up here, this is just a slightly different icon. It's a book icon. So I'm going to click on that there. If you look down here, there it is. Now it's not the full text or anything, but there's really handy information that you can put in here. You can add a note, say for example, chapter 10. Um, I could copy and paste um, um, in a quote here if I wanted to. So that again is an, just another useful way of keeping a hold and keeping a track of your research as you go. Now I'm just going to go back up here, go back to info. Look, these are the two ones you use, notes and info. If I go here, I notice it didn't bring in the publisher. I'm just going to fill that in here. Okay, If I look at my record it's Thomas Thompson Reuters. So I can just put that in myself. Okay, now that's just to make the points of hero. It isn't magic. Still, people put them in. You are still in control of your own records. Normally in WorldCat, it would be perfectly good records, but this is a good example because it shows you that you can edit it and put the extra bits in if you so need.
There's also times that you're going to want to uh, reference online reports. So say for example, I'm going to use this example here from the uh, Central Statistics Office. If I click on that here, okay, I'm going to save that now. The metadata that we're talking about, the sort of hidden information, it's not necessarily going to be as straightforward for these websites. You probably have to do a little bit of um, editing. Okay, so if you look at this here, a lot of the information is there. We got your URL, the access date, which is great. This is a little untidy, so I'm going to get rid of this here. Okay, leave the title in the title. You do need an author. Okay, even if it's um, a government body or or a company, you must have a an author there for that, or it won't work. Also, there's no date in this, but I can quite quickly put this in. It's 2017, so I'll just put it in there. There we go. I mean, you'd have to do that anyway. So, oh look, I have two here. <laughs> so I'll get rid of that. Okay. So that'll export nicely for me as well. The last thing I'm just going to mention briefly here, just so you know of its existence, we'll discuss it further in one of the other demos. Um, but you can create a new item as well. So I'm just going to click on this here. Okay, so I could do a little blank template for an artwork, for example. Or I could do a book section, which is a chapter. Or a blog post is often one that you might like. So just so you know, there that is there, and you could fill these things in yourself, the fields in here. We'll discuss that a little bit later in another demonstration, as I say. I think it's just handy for you know, uh, to know its existence here as well. So even if you use Zotero for nothing else other than keeping a track of your research, that'll be really handy for you. In some of our other demonstrations, you can have a look and you can see how you can use your records in here to help you with your referencing and your in-text citations and link directly into Word. So have a look at those other alternative uh, video demonstrations there.